They're reacting to Bill and Ben meet their match. When I saw this, I thought, okay, this looks interesting. Like, and you could see from the picture, they do not look happy. And I don't know who that woman is, but this is definitely going to be interesting. So let's get started. We're going to skip. Adults, oh. enjoy the fucking video. Uh, that's why I want to skip that intro. It's because of that. <laughs> Usually during the cooler months, the clean pits are often less busy. But this year, there was a big order to deliver, and lots of trucks were lined up in the yards, ready to be taken to the Harbour Edwards up, branch up, up, line. Up, 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 up. Again, I'd like to know how they did this. Like, did they draw this and just put it together? Like, is it stop animation? Like, I, how do you people do this? This is incredible. Bill and Ben, the tank engine twins, would usually do the run, and along the way, they would whistle up the little crossing that crosses the country lane to warn people that they are coming, as its regulations. But one day, the twins met their match. Across the field from the crossing lives a cottage that was recently owned by a woman named Mrs. Tibbs. She used to live in Tidmouth, but found it so noisy and very busy recently and wants to get away from the hustle and bustle. Of course. What's on earth? She gasped. Did you trouble? I was trying to get away from the noise, she groaned, not to move to it. Throughout the day, the twins puffed oh, up and no, down the line blowing their whistles trouble. at the crossing. Coming through, they peep. I already think I have an idea what this woman is going to do. Oh, my goodness. I think I have an idea now. Now that she said that, yeah, I think I know what she's going to do. And if I'm right, it's not going to be pretty. But then they saw Ms. All says that she's going to cause confusion and delay, and I'm hoping I'm wrong. Mrs. Tibbs running down the field. But she wasn't trying to catch up to them and wave. They saw that she was shaking her fist instead. Be quiet, she shouted. Some of us wanted peace and quiet. Bill and Ben were surprised. Hey, give me a second, everybody. All right, and we're back. I am trying some of the skills that I've learned in college with my YouTube channel. So, yeah, anyways, let's let's continue. The clay pits, the twins were coupled up to the next line of trucks. They were still surprised by Mrs. Tibbs shouting at them to be quiet. Did you see that woman shouting at us, Ben? Asked Bill. Yeah, what's with her? Agreed Ben. She's telling us to be quiet, but she's going shouting a mouthful at us. Why couldn't she take her own words? They were amused by this and carried on working. But every time they whistled at the level crossing, Mrs. Tibbs would still shout to complain about the noise they were making. You noisy great engine, she shouted. What is the regulations, Mom? replied Bill. But there was no use. Mrs. Tibbs was still shouting and berating the twins wherever they passed. Then they decided to tease her by blowing their whistles as no, loud as do that. They oh. This annoyed Mrs. Tibbs even further. Stop that! Be quiet! She snapped. Stop that! Be quiet! Muffled the twins as they blew their whistles. They carried on with their trick for days upon days upon days. I can't work! I can't work! Stop that! You're disturbing the peace! Stop that! You're disturbing the peace! Muffled the twins. Why didn't they just tell their top of that? They were enjoying themselves riding on Mrs. Tibbs. <laughs> until they began to feel tired of it all as Mrs. Tibbs was still complaining about the noise. They parked their trucks at the harbor and were getting annoyed by her. As soon as we're near that little crossing, we're going to see her having a fit again, groused Bill. Well, then I'll say this, replied Ben. We'll just whistle as much as we can. It's part of the rules that we have to warn people that we're coming, and even their crews agree to them as well. What? Mrs. Tibbs was soon attending her garden. So nice, so peaceful, she sighed happily. Why don't they just... See, my question is, why don't they tell Sir Topham Hatt about this? If it's causing a problem, then bring it up with Sir Topham Hatt or something, because all this is just doing is it's going to get her to do something that that you regret. Like, And that's what we got to learn from this is... If someone's not happy with what we're doing, like, just ignore them or tell somebody about it. And, yeah, so I'm hoping that Sir Topham Hatt finds out about this. 
I don't know what's gonna happen. Let's just wait and see. Mrs. Tibbs was shocked by the noise, and then she said, Oh, great, it's those things. She ran towards them, but because they were whistling loud and long, it was hard enough for Mrs. Tibbs to hear herself, and she covered her ears. The twins kept on whistling as soon as they went over the crossing, and as they were done, they cried out, It's regulations! And they stormed off. Finally, Mrs. Tibbs had had enough. If those yellow pests can't respect my peace and quiet, then I'll make them, she said. Oh, no! The next day, the twins were to make their final deliveries for the day. What's she gonna as do? Bill and Ben made their way towards the level crossing, they blew their whistles as usual. Then Bill saw a person up ahead and cried, Stop! His driver saw this it too, as well ridiculous. as Ben's, and the two engines applied their brakes. Standing on the level crossing was Mrs. Timps with a red flag. Everyone was surprised and cross. What do you think you're doing, retorted Bill. Do you realize what danger you put yourself into? But Mrs. Tibbs didn't listen to Bill's retort and instead walked towards his cab. She climbed up and started to shout at the driver and fireman all about the noise and the disturbance that the twins had caused to her. Her words were loud and clear, and some weren't too pleasing to hear. Bill and Ben's crews tried their best to reason with Mrs. Tibbs, but she was stubborn and rude. Why can't you treat this old woman with some respect, she said. I came here to have some peace. If you wanted peace, ma'am, then you should have moved to a house away from the railway line. Our line was here first, and your house came second. We have every right to whistle here because it's the rules, said Ben. Oh, true to your rules, retorted Mrs. Tibbs. Surely you could whistle someplace else instead of near my house. Bill, Ben, and their crews couldn't believe the ignorance coming from this there. Woman is Surely, Mom, replied Bill crossly. He almost shrieked. You heard of a railway before, right? Everyone began to argue with her, but they all had forgotten one thing. The twins had stopped on a level crossing. And when a level crossing is blocked by an engine in their train, no cars, buses, or lorries can get through. This is all the woman's traffic fault. started to build up on the country lane and they were getting impatient. Hey, come on, they shouted. We need to get through. But no one replied and they began to honk their horns. Oh, shut up, snapped Mrs. Tibbs crossly. And she continued on arguing with Bill, Ben, and their crews. One of the drivers just had enough and got his smile. Phone. Soon his call came through to the manageress, Mrs. Fibonacci. Hello, she asked, and she heard about the problem. I'll see to it. Thank you for calling. Mrs. Tibbs was not letting down a fair fight. She kept on berating them and telling them off that everyone was starting to get tired of it all. At last, the manageress came to the scene. Where's the Bill and Ben, said the manageress, please move back so the road vehicles can get through. Throw vehicles, they said, and they finally saw the commotion that they and Mrs. Tibbs had caused. Oh dear, they murmured, this wasn't and they their backed fault. away. This wasn't their fault, this is the woman's fault. Now, care to explain one at a time, please, on what was going on? And so they did. And while on some occasion one or the other would talk on top of each other, Mrs. Fibonacci soon got the clear picture. Now then, while I understand, Mrs. Tibbs, you came here to have some peace and quiet, I will say Bill and Ben had every right here. Mine and Sir Top and Hat's engines have to whistle at crossings and tunnels to warn people that they're approaching. If they don't, then you wouldn't be standing here today. As for you, she continued as she turned towards the twins, you caused an escalation, Mrs. Tibbs, that led to this mess in the first place. There was no need to deliberately annoy her, and that goes to your crews as well. Yeah, yes, but... ma'am. They yeah, replied. of course, yeah. Now then, since the traffic is cleared, I want you to take the china clay now and come straight back for more. Yes, ma'am, replied the twins. At the end of the day, like, they made a mistake. But Mrs. Tibbs was completely out of line. And I hope you understand to be more patient, Mrs. Tibbs, added Mrs. Fibonacci. Bill, Ben, their crews, and Mrs. Tibbs took those words to heart and started what? to respect each other. And from that day on, whenever the twins make their way to the crossing, they whistled and also gave a special peep to Mrs. Tibbs, who smiled and waved. She's used to the noise now. And when Bill and Ben went to Tidmouth, she felt it was too quiet without them in the background and began to miss them. But she knew that they won't be gone for long and she looks forward to seeing them again in the new year. See, 
I I feel like they should have talked to the manager in the first place. Like, this whole situation was completely ridiculous. Like, this situation was ridiculous. So, I'm glad it worked out in the end. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching. This is KBear101 signing out. Adios, everybody.